Welcome to Homeschool Mom. This is my YouTube channel. My name is Rebecca. I am a homeschool mom of five young children between the ages of four years old all the way up to 11. It's crazy how fast time is going. I was homeschooled myself all the way up until about halfway through grade 10. I had a couple school experiences in the middle of that, but for the most part, I was homeschooled for most of my education and I loved it. Sure, it had its hard moments, but I really did love being homeschooled and I always wanted to homeschool my kids. Was kind of hoping my husband would be on board with that with me and sure enough, he is. So we are now a homeschool family. We've been doing this for seven years now and we love it. And despite the chaos and the hard days and the hard moments, we have truly found um, just so much value in it and we've grown so much closer together as a family. And so that's just me in a nutshell before I get into today, which today I just wanted to break away from doing my reviews, which I know um, it helps you guys choose curriculum that's gonna be a good fit for your family and I'm passionate about that, but I'm passionate more so about us as homeschool moms and homeschool dads or whoever may be watching this, parents of children who homeschool, I feel very passionate about helping parents to, to keep on. I feel like that's a difficult thing. I feel like there's a lot of times that we struggle, that we wonder if we're doing the right thing, that we take on so much pressure and you know, outer critics just so much affect our opinions of ourselves and where we feel like we're failing our kids or are they getting enough or are they going to be socialized or are they going to be weird and, and we take on weight and we take on weight and we take on weight until there's this massive burden on our shoulders of what we feel we need to be and when we feel like we don't stay in line with this person that's probably not even really possible then we go to bed feeling like they'd be better off in school. And so my biggest passion is not helping you guys choose curriculum because that's really only a small part of the equation. The right curriculum, it, it does really help, it does. But you can use any curriculum or no curriculum and have a good or bad homeschool experience and it's more about you and what you make out of it than it is anything else. You can overcome every obstacle if you have the right attitude and if you are persistent and if you are consistent and if you're constantly reevaluating and you're willing to try new things and to change and be flexible, your homeschool can be successful no matter what you are using. It's not about that. It's first and foremost about you. And so that's who I want to talk to today is about you. And I want to talk about the mistakes that we make and how those affect our homeschool experience. So if you're a coffee drinker, pour yourself a double shot today because this is getting real. And if you're a tea drinker, drink some tea, find something, find a piece of paper, find a quiet spot, hide in a closet if you need to. The bathroom is a really great place for that. And let's have a homeschool coffee chat with Rebecca. So before I talk to you about homeschool mistakes and failures, I want to share one of mine that in my mind stands out as being <laughs> quite epic in the, the lineup of Rebecca failures in my history as a homeschool mom. And that is starting out. I started out because I was homeschooled, I was so, so, so certain that I had all the answers. And I've talked about this in some of my homeschool expectations videos, but I really was, I really was confident in my abilities and I was confident that I knew curriculum and I just, I just dove in. And that is my personality. I'm a diver, you know, in, the sense of the word that I just dive into things. I don't wait, I don't think it, overthink it, I just go. So I just went into homeschooling with a very naive sense of self-confidence and I burned, you guys, I crashed and burned. Like it was so brutal. I, I can't even remember, my son was in kindergarten, maybe we did a month of school. If you put all the, the grounded days together. And I remember even reading with him and it was so frustrating. And again, this is my personality, which makes it harder. I always, I always have, have admired people that are graceful and are gentle and are patient because I am the opposite of all those things. And I am intense and I am driven and I'm motivated and I'm impatient and impulsive. And so sitting and listening to my son try to read over and over and over again. And the worst part, oh, the worst part was I would give him a, a blend. Like we would sound out cat and we would point to each sound, k, 
at. And then at the end of that, he would say it. And then two words later, we would get to the same word and we would sound it out again. K uh, and it's okay, it's two times. We'll, we'll give you some time. By the end of the book, when I'm ready to scream, we're still sounding it out. And oh, it was, it was the most painful thing. My patience from the beginning to where I am now, I still consider myself a very impatient person. And yet I'm able to sit through a book without being impatient. I'm able to just, just get into a mode of, of, I don't even know what I do now. I'm, it still annoys me. It's still annoying. It's still not my favorite thing. Teaching my kids to read has never been and never will be my favorite thing. I would never want to go take a job teaching kids to read. That takes a special kind of person. That's not me. So I've come a long ways and really that's because of experience. So when I look back at my homeschool experience over the last seven years, that one stands out as a fail. At the end of kindergarten, I would be in tears, like in tears, and my son would be in tears, which for me is one of the worst parts because I felt like I had killed some of his enthusiasm as, as a child who was so driven and, and motivated and excited. He was so excited, you guys. He was so excited. He is my easiest child to teach. He loves to learn. He's such a keener. He, he's a pleasure to teach. My son is a pleasure to teach. And I have all different types of kids. Some are more challenging than others. He was a pleasure to teach. And I took this enthusiasm of his and I got frustrated with him and irritated and, and frustrated at myself. And it was this, this battle waged within myself. And sometimes that battle came out with me being frustrated and come on, try harder. And I pressured him. And, and sometimes we would just both be crying. And I look back on that with so much regret, so much regret, because I, that was a failure. That was a failure. I don't think that I failed as a homeschool mom, and I know that God is faithful to my kids for where I make mistakes. He rises up in their lives, and he will use that. But I have failed as a homeschool mom, and there are moments that I look back, and, and at the end of that, I really seriously consider putting my kids in school. I thought, I don't know what my mom had, but I don't have that. I, I am not cut out for this. So I have been there. I have made mistakes. People look at me and think, oh, you're just the perfect homeschool mom. They look at my day in the life. Well, sure, because I was on camera, so I wasn't yelling. <laughs> you guys, I still get frustrated with my kids. I still am the same person, impatient Rebecca, impulsive, intense, and I still struggle with when my kids are goofing around and I tell them to do something and everything's a mess and the pressure rises and rises and rises and rises until mommy gets a little frustrated and we have a day of cleaning. Well, I, I talk to them about um, why mommy's frustrated and that they need to clean and try harder. And it's not perfect. I am not perfect. I am, an, I am, I am, I'm a broken, fallen person who makes mistakes all the time. So, so I want to share the story with you so that you can see the fact that seven years later, I still consider homeschooling to be my greatest joy. That seven years later, I see the fruit of my children. That seven years later, I know the value of this. I know it's worth persevering. That when you have those moments where there is no question, it's not just doubts, it's not inner critic, it's not outer critic, it is you messed up. You did it wrong. Maybe you got mad and you said to your kid, like, why aren't you like your brother? And then you instantly just felt horrible because you knew you were, you were never going to do that. You were never going to compare them. Or maybe you lost it on your kid and you yelled at them and they were crying. And, and, and maybe you, you one day called a child stupid or implied it by saying, why can't you ever figure this out? Why is this so difficult for you? And you know the message that they're receiving is that, why can't I? I'm messed up. I'm stupid. We make mistakes. Mistakes happen. We are not perfect. And our kids know that. They know we're not perfect. Talk to your kids about it. Say, hey, I want to be with you, and I love you, and I value you, and I'm going to make mistakes. And when I do, I'm going to come, I'm going to say sorry because I don't want that for us, but I'm going to make mistakes. And we have to have grace for each other. And I'm going to have grace for your mistakes when, when they're fussing and whining and goofing off. And I want you to have grace for my mistakes because this is hard. What I want to talk to you about is where to go from there. Okay? You make mistakes. You look back. You have regret. You feel like you failed. 
normal, normal, normal. Every homeschool mom goes through that at some point or other because we're human, it happens. We have really two responses to our mistakes. We can give up, we can wallow, we can set it on our shoulders, we can feel guilt and guilt ridden and we just, just stay in that place of, I'm a failure, I'm unable to do this, my kids would be better off in school, I am not doing enough, I need to try harder, if I could only try harder, and we put all this pressure on ourselves, and we try harder, and then when we fail, oh, it's so much worse, the fall is so much greater, because now we've really failed when we were trying our very hardest, even when we try our hardest, we can't do it, and, and we stay in this place of wrestling, and we stay in this place of wallowing, and we stay in this place of of subjection to the lie that we are failures. That's one reaction. The other reaction is to own your mistakes. Own your mistakes. Take responsibility for them. That's why I say go to your kids, own them. I am sorry I shouldn't have yelled. I am sorry I shouldn't have gotten frustrated with you. I am sorry I should not have compared you to your brother. I don't compare you to your brother. That was just, mommy was frustrated and I should never have said it. I'm sorry. Own your mistakes. Be honest with your husband, with your spouse. Ask them to help you keep, keep you accountable. Ask a friend to help keep you accountable and talk to them. And don't just talk to them. We all want yes men. And us as friends, we want to be yes men for other people. When someone tells me, when my friend tells me, oh, I yelled at my kids or I did this or I struggled or I, I made a mistake or you know my husband and I are fighting, whatever it may be, we, we want to say, well, it's because of this. It's because of that. And we want to make them feel better. That's normal. That's human nature. Find a friend or spouse. Your spouse will be willing to do this for you. Find someone who's willing to give you the hard line and say, yeah, yeah, that was, shouldn't have done that. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Did you talk to your kids? Did you talk to your husband? You know, when we make mistakes, what do you do from that? Find accountability. Find people who are willing to speak truth into your life and own your mistakes. Don't be guilt ridden over them. Just own them. It's like instead of trying to fight it, you just take it and you say, ah, I'm human. Look, I fell. Wow, what a surprise. I'll probably do it again tomorrow. And you say sorry and you own it and you move on and not just move on. You guys, we take those things and instead of seeing them as this great dark blotch in our past, instead of seeing them as this, this failure, this 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 thing on our resume that's just never going to go away and we don't want to talk about. And you guys, you look back on that as a gift. As a gift. It is the greatest gift that you have because that was what propelled you to make a change, to do something different, to identify something in yourself or identify something in your kids. You not only own it, you appreciate it because you're going to use that and you're going to learn from it. And only through owning it do you ever, ever find a place of being able to learn from it. So when you have a mistake, when you fail, when you mess up, when you go to bed and you feel like, man, today sucked and that was not my kids, that was my attitude. I had a crappy attitude. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and everybody paid for it and I sucked today. Okay, I'm gonna own that. And I'm gonna talk to my husband and I'm gonna take it easier this week because clearly I'm feeling stressed. And I'm gonna talk to my kids. I'm gonna say sorry and I'm gonna learn from this because I know that obviously I don't have feeling pressured or it's it's a hormonal time of month and I need to take away some of the pressure that I'm feeling because I'm not able to cope with it. Because usually it comes out when you're unable to cope because of other things. So what can I cut? What can I scale back on? What can I do differently? Tomorrow, we're going to go on a field trip. We're going to do something fun. You learn from your mistakes. Stop viewing them as something negative and start viewing them as something positive. Every time you face a failure, every time you face a moment where you can either feel guilty or you can grow, choose growth. Choose growth. Stop putting the weight of the perfect homeschool day on your shoulders. Everything does not ride on you. When there's mistakes, and there will be, whether you, whether your kids, whether your husband, whether your spouse, whether your, it doesn't matter, there will be mistakes, things will come up, it will not be perfect, nothing is perfect. Stop putting the pressure of this on yourself, and when things come, be willing to use these opportunities, and your kids are gonna see that. And the biggest gift we can give our kids is our mistakes and our failures, and them seeing what we do from that. You know what? I am the person that rises up 
I am the person that rises up. When I face, when I face adversity, I rise up. And that is not something I can take and say, well, it's just because I'm so great. It's because of what God gave me in my life. It's because of my parents. It's because when they went through hard times, they rose up. When my mom made mistakes, she rose up. And I look back as, as when my own childhood, my own memories, I don't remember all the mistakes and all the bad parts and all the, you know, I don't wallow in this, oh, things were so hard. My mom made mistakes, okay? But I barely remember those because she owned those things. And I feel like we, <laughs> We're going to make mistakes. But if we can move on, not only is it for us a gift and going to make us into the person that we are supposed to be, but it is for your kids. It's a gift for them to see you struggle and persevere. And how much more so are they going to feel valued and loved that even though they could clearly see that mom's having a hard time, that this is hard, she's doing this because she loves us. And they feel valued and they feel loved and they feel like they are worth pursuing and not giving up. Don't give up on yourself, but don't give up on your kids. So that's it. That's my little message for today. Burning on my heart, you guys. I hope you have an amazing homeschool day, week, month, year. I hope that you guys are able to look past the, the struggles and the insecurities and things that you're going to face. Find a friend that you can talk to. If that's your spouse, that's your spouse. Find someone that you can talk to that can hold you accountable, that's willing to speak truth into your life, and also not allow you to believe the lies and wallow in things that you're not supposed to be wallowing in. It's just going to tear you down. It's just going to make your homeschool less than it needs to be. And this year, it's not going to be like that for you. So there you have it. Have an amazing homeschool week and stay tuned for more. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button in the bottom and we'll talk to you guys again next week.